So this is the second PowerPoint that is for Monday. And again, this one is for everybody. We're going to learn a little bit about environmental changes and the impact that this has on animals' habitats. And then the activities that you're going to do will be different depending on which class you're in. But everybody can watch this one. There's lots of useful information here for you. So we are going to describe environmental dangers to endangered species and throughout the week present your findings orally and in writing. We're not going to worry about that just yet. So we will be able to name some endangered species, say how changes to the environment have affected endangered species and then later in the week we're going to either write a report or present our findings to the class and there's a separate video telling you all about that. So changing environments. Living things depend upon their habitats to give them everything they need including water, food, air and a space to live and grow. Human beings are able to make big changes to their habitat to make it suitable for them to live in. What are some of the ways that humans are able to change their environment? That's not as easy a question as you might think. Have a think about some of the things that humans have done to the earth to mean that it is uh, really good for us to live there. What we're going to find out about is that that might mean that it is not as suitable for some of the animals. But why is it really good on, for most parts of the earth for humans? What kinds of things have we done? Have a think. So if we go back to the last PowerPoint where they talked about food, shelter and raise a place to raise their young, what have we done in terms of food? So one thing is obviously that there are supermarkets and shops near to where people live. But there's more than that, isn't there? Because all of the things that are in the supermarkets need to come from somewhere. So we've learned how to farm the land and how to grow things in different countries, depending on what the climate is like, and then ship those all across the world to give to each other. We've learned about all kinds of different things that we can eat. We're omnivores, unless you're a vegetarian, which means that we can eat different types of plants. We know which ones are safe for us to eat and which ones are poisonous um, and also all kinds of different animals. And sometimes that varies a little bit depending on which country that you're in. What about shelter? So actually, with this, humans have done all kinds of things, haven't they? Because in all sorts of different countries, you get different types of houses. In a very developed country, you would have lots of um, very well developed um, schools and houses and shops and offices made of bricks and concrete and taking up a lot of space. And then we do other things, don't we? We build hospitals and doctor's surgeries and churches and roads between different places. Uh, and then we need to think about things like how to make fuel to power everything. So where does our electricity come from? Uh, where does our gas come from and our oil that makes some of the things work? Where does our petrol come from that makes our cars work? So these are all the ways that we've adapted our habitat to suit humans. But what we're going to learn about is the impact that that has had on some of the animals who uh, weren't able to do anything like that. Some species are very good at adapting to changes in their habitats. These species are able to live alongside humans successfully. And so you'll recognise lots of these because uh, you probably see these every day. We talked about foxes. You don't see those as often, but sometimes you do. Loads of pigeons because they're really good at eating all kinds of leftover things, uh, bread that gets dropped and um, any other things that they can find, really. You get lots of those in towns and cities. Butterflies, because they really like all the types of flowers that grow near to humans. Stinging nettles. Dandelions. There's lots of dandelion clocks around at the moment. I don't know if you've seen those. <gasps> Spiders. They like to come into our houses, don't they, as it's getting cold. So at this time of year, they'll all be outside. So that's good. And you get lots of wild rabbits as well, actually. So these have adapted to be able to live near to us. Some animals, though, can only survive in a particular habitat, such as a rainforest or marshland. When the habitat changes, these species find it very difficult to survive. So we're going to have a look at some of the ways that these habitats might change and what impact that has on the different types of animals that live there. 
What type of um, habitat can you see in this picture? It's like a desert, doesn't it, with all the cacti? Habitats can change for many different reasons. Some of these changes are natural. What kind of natural events could cause changes to habitats? And how could these affect the plants and animals that live there? So the pictures here are of four different natural events that can occur in the world that aren't anything to do with humans that still cause problems for animals. So uh, Willow Class did a topic about um, volcanoes, didn't you? So obviously, if all that hot molten lava and ash comes down all over the place and uh, burns lots of things, then that would destroy lots of habitats. What about uh, some kind of uh, big storm or tsunami or something like that? That would change the habitat as well, wouldn't it? This one, what's happened here? This is a very dry area. It's probably quite dry anyway, but I think they're suffering from a drought, which means they've gone a really, really long time without water. And then that last one there is the opposite problem. That is where everything's flooded. So maybe the food that the animals would have would be underneath all of that water. And that's no good either, is it? So natural changes. Events like earthquakes, storms, floods, hurricanes, wildfires and droughts can have very serious consequences for living things. Habitats can be destroyed and the plants and animals that live there might be killed. Those animals that survive might find their sources of food and water have disappeared. They may no longer have a safe place to live and grow. These fish died when their river habitat dried up in a drought. While these events are natural, many are made worse by climate change and so are affected by the activities of humans. So actually what we're going to find out about in this topic is that humans have got a lot to answer for. So here we go. Here are some of the things caused by humans. Most of the changes to the habitat of living things are caused by humans. What kind of environmental changes can you think of that are caused by humans? And how could these affect living things? I'm going to give you a minute just to have a look at these because it discusses them on the next PowerPoint slide. So have a little look before we move on and tell me if you can work out what's going on there, what the humans have been up to and what impact that's having on the animals and their habitats, and their environments where they live. Right, so the first one, do you know what the word for this is where they chop all the trees down? Deforestation. There it is at the top. Great word. If you don't already know it, learn that one. Put it in your word bank. Many of the, the things that humans do destroy animal habitats. Only a very small amount of the world's land is covered in rainforest, but about half of all plants and animals live here. Isn't that a lot? So a really tiny amount of the world is covered in rainforest, but nearly half of all the plants and animals in the whole world live there. But look what's happening to it. Can you see this big part where everything's been cut down, that massive patch? Humans have cut down large areas of the forest to clear space for building or farming. This has destroyed the habitats of many species and made it difficult for them to survive. So you might choose to research an animal that would normally live in the rainforest. So you're, if you're doing that, you're going to be talking a lot about deforestation. Next one, pollution. Did you see some of the things on pollution on that other slide? This is something that we get in the towns near to us, isn't it really? Waste from factories and pollution that contaminates the ground makes it difficult for plants to grow. This in turn means there's no food or shelter for the animals that once lived among the plants. So basically, if you think about the food chain, normally the plants are the very bottom of the food chain. So whenever all the plants have gone, whatever came next on the food chain and ate the plants hasn't got anything to eat anymore and can't survive. And then whatever ate that uh, hasn't got anything to eat either. And so the problem goes all the way up the food chain. Chemicals and waste that are spilled in the sea are very dangerous to all the living things in the marine habitat. So all of the things that live in the ocean. And there are some endangered um, animals that live in the ocean that you might decide that you're going to learn about, and do some research about and uh, present to us later in the week. Pollution in and near rivers and streams kills the plants and animals in the water and poisons the drinking water of many living things. 
Urbanisation, have you heard this word? This one might be uh, new for you. So an urban area is a built up area like a town or a city. So urbanisation is when things are uh, developed a lot. So um, a place like Maidenhead has had a lot of urbanisation over the years and even more so a big city like uh, Manchester or London. As humans build upon areas that were once natural habitats, there is not enough land and food left for the animals to share. So imagine uh, going back hundreds of years, Maidenhead would have probably been fields and think about how many different types of plants and animals would have lived here then. But now they can't because it's all taken over with um, the area that we live in. Wild animals can be forced to come back to human areas to look for food and shelter. And this can be dangerous for humans and animals. Oh, my goodness me. I hope no crocodiles are going to come and visit us. Luckily, we don't get crocodiles or bears in this country. But in some other countries, animals like that do have to go into the towns to look for food because there isn't enough food left for them elsewhere. Invasive species. Sometimes when humans introduce new species to an area, this can have a very bad effect on the existing wildlife. So here's an example that is um, a really relevant example for Round by Us because we see loads of these squirrels out in the nature reserve, don't we? Grey squirrels are as an example of an invasive species that is common in the UK. These are native to America. What does native mean? It means that that's where they originated from. But were introduced to the UK in the 1870s because people thought it would be nice to see them in parks and gardens. Now I'm coming over to this side. Unfortunately, grey squirrels are bigger, stronger and breed more quickly than our native red squirrels. Grey squirrels eat the food and take up the habitat that was once held by red squirrels and now the red squirrels are in danger of extinction. So this is a, something that humans have done as well, because the humans brought the grey squirrels over to England. And because of that, the red squirrels are nearly extinct as well. So that's a little bit about how um, habitats change and how some animals can adapt and others can't and the impact that has on their environment and gives you a bit of a clue about why some of these animals might start to be endangered. So on your home learning sheet for today, you have got some different activities depending on which class you are in to have a look at. And then we're going to learn a little bit more all together tomorrow morning. Have a good day.